everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Gerard Powers. Gerard, we had one heck of a game this past Saturday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Even got to see Tom Brady for a drive, mm -hmm. which was bit of a shocker to me being that he just started practicing for the first time this year last week uh how was your weekend and uh just in general what do you think about the game uh weekend was good and uh you know had some youth football start had some college football games on so you know it, it, it life felt normal for a little bit but uh got a chance to watch the game and uh, some interesting things. I thought it was kind of fun to see uh, some of the ones get some reps. I know I thought everybody was going to, you know, start and play a lot and all that. But on the offensive line, we had, you know, mostly of the backups in, which needed these type of reps versus a team like the Bucks, who had their starters in on defense. And, man, they look like a well-oiled machine on defense. You can tell that those guys have been together for the past four years or at least their core uh, they look good on defense, but um, I thought it was perfect for um, the offense to kind of face that type of style of a of a defense in Ty Bowles. That's, that's one of the best defenses in football, period. And uh, to get those reps in a preseason format, man, um, you can really learn from guys that you needed to see some things from. Matt, Matt Ryan looked a lot more comfortable. Uh, in the pocket, uh, you know, throwing to his guys and whatnot. Like I said, um, you know, that defensive line that the, the Bucks got against our backups, we knew it wasn't going to fare too well. But uh, I thought defensively, uh, you know, started a little slow, uh, but still held them, uh, held them to three points. And when you're talking about a cover three type scheme like Gus Bradley, you might have those type of drives where teams move the ball a little bit. But when it gets closer to the end zone, it gets a little harder to score just because everybody got their eyes on the ball in this scheme. But, uh, you know, a couple of the D linemen, man, 90, he, 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 I was impressed. I was impressed with uh, just some of the things that I saw just from the front without having to blitz anybody and keeping everybody free, stopping the run. Um, I mean, it was just some good things that I thought that we needed to see in the, this game. That, and, and we, Yeah, we are going to definitely talk a little bit more in depth about number 90, Big Grover Stewart. All right. But before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody that Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports contests, events with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news in every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head over to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BLEAV50, that's B L E A V 5 0, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, let's talk about that defense. Again, it started, like you said, it started off a little slow. We're like, um, uh, this run defense doesn't look like it's improved much. Uh, when, when, when you start off and you're like, uh, you're, you're giving up 10 yards of carry. And then it became heckle and jive. jive uh, heckle, Jekyll and Hyde. There we go. Wow. I couldn't figure that out. One drive, they would give up a bunch of yards on rushing, and the next, they, they, they would take yardage in rushing, right? Especially uh, those times, like one drive, Grover Stewart took that entire drive completely yeah, over. I mean, game. he was in the backfield every snap, just making all kind of chaos. What, it, from a cornerback standpoint, if you're back there and you're watching a guy like that consistently get pressure, what goes through your mind? You know that the quarterback's gonna have to get rid of the ball a lot faster. So um, the 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 kind of thoughts that you have in your mind, you can kind of figure out what routes are coming. Because uh, when the quarterback has to get rid of it quick, it only can be so many type of uh, <laughs> different routes. So it, it 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 gives you comfort in the back end that you're not gonna have to cover for long. You can take a gamble or two. You can kind of bait your bait your man or bait the quarterback in certain things. Um, but but you know that's that's those those type of pressure moments that the defensive front was causing. I mean that's what you hope for in that system. Uh, you don't want to have to blitz everybody to stop the run or do things like that. You want those guys to be able to. I mean you don't even want to have to blitz everybody to get a dang uh, pressure on the QB when he's in the pocket. You want those guys 
to figure it out up front. And it seems like, yeah, that first drive, we gave up some points. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, not points, but yards. I mean, but we're talking about Tom Brady, Julio. Like, we're talking about a team that's probably going to be in the top five discussion when the season is over trying to win another Super Bowl. So this, you know, giving up yards to those guys may be a little, little skewed, especially when we're talking about the first series of a game and Tom just getting back and they want to make sure that his rhythm and everything is on cue with uh, with, with with uh, him being back in the fold. But I thought the defense showed, you know, what we're, what we're hoping to see going forward, and that's pressure from the front without having to do anything crazy. And the back end, guys making plays. Stephon Gilmore, again, is showing you that he can cover top end wide receivers and uh, still be a dominant guy in this game with a couple plays he made on Mike Evans. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to focus in on one specific play in general. And uh, look, I don't personally always – uh, go blame the ref, blame the ref, blame the ref. But that pass interference call in the, in the on the first drive against Gilmore, I looked at that and I'm like, that looks textbook to me. Uh, what the heck? Did you see something there that you thought deserved a PI call? Nah, it's just the ref <laughs> got to get back in the fold of things too. We know how they're going to call it in the season. I mean, that's how they're going to call it. You know, in the preseason, you definitely hope, you know, you can see good coverage and complement it by letting it go and all that. But everybody know the NFL is a, a offensive league. They want to see points, and, you know, and all those, any type of close situation with DBs and wide receivers, it's going to go the wide receiver way. But hopefully um, uh, when the season starts, it's not going to be like that, though. That was that was just textbook coverage by Gilly. Yeah, I thought so, too. Uh, speaking of coverage. Generally, when you think of making a business decision uh, and when you're talking NFL, it's generally, you know, your big running backs and and, and corners, you know, uh, defensive backs trying to make tackles on them. But in this game, it seemed like it was a flip. OK, not very often do I see defensive backs making statements. And I was seeing big hit after big hit after big hit by our defensive backs. Everybody. Rodney McLeod, Gilmore, uh, I mean, just everybody, uh, the, the rookie, right? Nick Cross was making big. Everybody was making big hits out there. And does that, first off, I expect that from the young guys or the guys trying to make the team. But I'm seeing Gilmore, who's 31. I'm seeing Rodney McLeod, who's, you know, around that age as well. They're out there dropping hammers on people in a preseason game. In a preseason game. Is that a norm? Well, I told you last pod, man, it's dress rehearsal. These guys are coming out here. They want to feel what they're going to feel in season. I mean, and that's Gilly's style of play. He's always been known as a tackler, not just a cover guy. You know, he's always, you know, been one of the, the more sure tacklers, big hitter type corners uh, in our game, even with – like I said, the, the the cover skills, you know, he, he has a total package. And then, like you said, you look at Cross, the rookie, you look at Thomas. I mean, you look at uh, mm -hmm. Rodney coming down and just the physical style. Um, you know, sometimes you want your secondary to look and play a certain way. And it seems like we got the right guys in the building where everybody's got more so of an aggressive uh, uh, style of play to their game that might complement one another. I mean, you know, Kenny Moore is a for sure tackler, a big mm -hmm. hitter uh, as well when we're talking about the nickel position. So maybe that'll be their their look going forward. Even though we got some guys that can cover, uh, we can count on them to be, uh, you know, for sure tacklers because we need, you know, our secondary guys being the best tacklers on the field anyway. How important is that when you got guys that can, uh, you know, drop a hammer, setting a tone for a game? Right. I mean, if defensively. You, if you go back years ago to my days, you know, dinosaur days, and I mean, you think of like Marlon Jackson, Kelvin Hayton, Antoine Bethea, Bob Sanders, like, you know, we're used to seeing that style of play in our secondary. I mean, those guys were hitters, you know, and mm -hmm. we're talking about in a scheme to where even though it's not a, it wasn't a cover three scheme to where uh, everybody had their eyes on the ball. It was more cover two-ish to where everybody had, the, had their eyes on the ball. And we used to, every week, we used to see big hit after big hit when it when it uh, came to those guys. So to see that now in, in the new scheme that we have, I mean, I think it's needed. I mean, we, we see week in, week out, you know, how talented these offensive skill guys are. I mean, you're talking about running backs that can catch out.
feel and uh you know go to the house we're talking about multiple wide receivers it's not just you know you got a number one and a number two receivers it's more like one a one b and then the then the receiver is the number two receiver type so i mean every week you're going to be facing the most talented guys in the world and everybody's trying to get these skill guys the ball uh asap and make it hard on the, on the 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 perimeter guys to tackle so you want your secondary to to be for sure tacklers uh you know from cornerback to safety to the nickel position what do you see from the offensive starters what uh there's still a little bit of question marks i think uh mm -hmm. when it comes to passing the football right Right. But I mean, again, we're talking about even though it was dress rehearsal, uh, you're not going to go in there doing anything crazy because, you know, once I realized the offensive line um, is not going to be that same offensive line from week one, Jonathan and, and uh, Hans is not playing. You know, once I start those reports and all that, then you have to go back and look, well, this and was it is not the same game plan when you got your full roster intact. So you wanted to see Matt Ryan go out there and just go through the progressions and hit who's ever open. Don't do anything crazy, just more so, again, just getting comfortable within the pocket, within the scheme, giving your role players some good reps, you know, versus, versus uh, probably the best D-line or top D-line in football. You know, it was some good reps for those reserve guys and, and uh, to, for them to even protect my, Matt Ryan the best way that they could. Uh, but I expect when our first line is intact and then all of our skill guys intact, it's going to open up everything. We're going to be a run first team to start to start this thing off. We have to be, especially like our best position is at running back with the depth that we have and the playmakers that we have. So everything is going to go through the running back position. And I think it's more so of making sure our run game is intact to start the season and our pass game, I have time to kind of catch up. Uh, but I don't think anybody should just – expect our pass game to come out there and just be this simple simplistic type scheme i think uh when week one get around here you're gonna see the 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 way that um the the scheme is set up to kind of complement one another with the shots downfield running the ball play action all those type of things so i think we're going to look totally different on offense week one i'm not i might be if, if i had a percentage to say my concern level i'll, I'll give it three percent four percent but I'm not going to sit here and just think that, you know, before the season started, I'm worried about the offense when we're talking preseason still. Yeah. Um, shout out to Armani Watts. Hope he recovers quickly. Um, good special teams player uh, here in the NFL and just a, a good NFL player in general. Uh, he was the sole major injury in this game uh, for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, there was a play that I saw from Matt Ryan that once I stopped it and watched it from the coach's film, I was like, this was impressive. It was that pass to Michael Pittman Jr. where Michael Pittman Jr. was running down the one-yard line, right? And he, and, he, he, him. and he threw it, yeah, a little bit behind him. And when I looked at it, I realized that was on purpose. Yeah, perfect. That was perfect because he was being trailed by a corner and that safety was coming downhill to cut that route off had he led Pittman. And if he led it, if he led Pittman, that's a pick six by the safety, you know, and because he threw it right at Pittman where he had to catch it like this, Pittman was able to use his body to block that safety out, make the catch and go down. That is a perfect pass. And a lot of people, you know, you, you, you look at a, a gameplay and you say, well, he kind of threw that a little behind him. He didn't lead him. Sometimes that's not the perfect placement for the football, right? Oh, all right. I mean, you're going to see more of that. I'm pretty sure some other plays. Uh, one of the, the best plays that I think I saw of Matt Ryan is, uh, I forget it was the first series, second series, to where he goes through his progression. And uh, I want to say it's third down, and he just takes off, get the 12 yard. It was like third and eight or second and eight or something like that. And he gets like a 12-yard game running the ball. And, again, we're talking about Matt Ryan, who is not a runner, uh, but like we said, a few pods, um, you know, before this one, he's going to make the right decision. He, he's not mm -hmm. going to be that type of guy that's just going to force ball after ball. You know, whatever the defense gives him, he's the type of quarterback that he will take it, you know. And, uh, and I think that's good for what we got right now. So I, I just think that when it comes to his style of play and the leadership role that he brings, 
uh, that's what's going to complement and benefit our offense the most, just his decision-making at the end of the day, putting us in the right play, checking to the right runs, the right routes, all those type of things. I mean, those little things matter. Yeah, absolutely. Now, tomorrow is cuts. Oh, my goodness. I think it's tomorrow, right? Usually uh, it's sure, Tuesday. Sure. Tuesdays after the preseason game. I may be mistaken, but either way, uh, the cuts from 80 to 53 happen uh, shortly. And I think I think the coach, I think Coach Reich has got a, uh, some really tough decisions to make in certain parts, right? I think mm-hmm. there are some uh, very intriguing options, especially on defense at – at uh, the defensive back positions and at the linebacker positions. Uh, there, I've, I've seen a lot of good uh, play by certain specific people. Uh, do you keep a, a, a guy because, you know, his return ability, right? Uh, just extra return ability because um, there was really good plays there. Uh, Weatherford, uh, the linebacker, I thought he popped quite a bit in this game. Uh, there was a bunch of different situations. This is that point in the season where, you know, veteran players have made their friends, right? You're sitting there and you're, you've been eating, playing, basically living with these different guys for the last three months. And now almost half of them will be gone here soon, right? Yeah, but it's kind of uh, – uh... How, how how to explain it. Even though you've kind of grown close to, you know, the guys that's been in the room, still every day there's been in and out traffic, if that means. Like every day the process has been one or two guys getting cut, one or two guys being signed, new faces being here or there. So mentally, even though you're playing games, you're practicing together and all that, you know this is not the the, the team yet. So you still have that little separation of all in. We're together. Like you, it's still a little bit of separation uh, um, in in your mind or in the room, energy that's in the room or whatnot. Because everybody understands the process of uh, making the team. You know, the the first cut, second wave of cuts, and then all of a sudden preseason's over, and these are the final cuts. And uh, you know, some some guys' lives are about to change. Some guys' lives are about to change for good and bad. You know, some people getting cut, some people getting signed, or whatever the case may be. You just know uh, it's, it's a hard day to kind of be around. So a lot of teams would take like today off, Tuesday off, maybe Wednesday as well to kind of clear the air a little bit and uh, you know get get everybody honed in and, and on the 53 man roster, which uh, probably be announced on Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. So, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, there it is. I was I was trying to find my uh, my sheet here that's got the the roster on it, and um, you know, there's guys on here that, like I said, it's it's, it's going to be so tough, right? Um, with like Tony Brown, I thought my my in my personal opinion, um, I thought Dallas Flowers really has a shot at making the team, you know, but uh, I don't know because last year for the Indianapolis Colts, uh, I thought Andre Sachere was a lock to make the team at safety. And, mm-hmm. you know, the way he played with the the impact he had in those preseason games and w- what we saw in, in training camp, and yet he was released and now he's with the Philadelphia Eagles. So um, no matter what, no matter what you think personally, you know, there's other things that, that, that coaches are thinking about when they're thinking about building a team, right. Rather than just that. Yeah. But what fans forget, like, it's just not about how they played in the game. Uh, You might have some guys that might've played, you know, great in the preseason and look horrible for seven days straight at practice that might be on the bubble. Uh, You might have fringe guys that look like that look horrible horrible during the game but but looks great at practice so it's a lot of you know things that might go into cutting guys especially when we're talking about fringe guys you know that that the team haven't invested in the team don't got money in and and things like that that you're just hoping to find some diamond in the roughs people that you know are hard workers doing what they're supposed to do uh prepare well um, you know, go through practice week well, plays well. You're looking for guys that you can count on when it comes to the 53. So if you're a guy that's just been up and down, 
you know, in training camp practices, meeting rooms and all that, you know, in the game or whatever the case may be, you might be a guy that not make this team. But at that same token, from a business standpoint, if you go through the roster and you look at people that got money, like guaranteed money this this offseason or this year or whatever the case may be, those guys might have, you know, some – it might be a guy or two on that list that might have had a bad camp. You know, not not great camp, average game or whatnot, but because they got money invested in them, you know, it saves them a roster spot. But because just like any other business, uh, if you if you invest money into something, you're just not going to get rid of it. You're going to try to get your money's worth at the end of the day. So, you know, it's a lot of business factors that that, that kind of come into it that uh, us as fans now we, we tend to forget, you know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Let's t- let's discuss the MVP of the NFL preseason a little bit here uh, because he did it again. He made another amazing play. Uh, and, yeah. Um, look, there's a lot of talk on social media about – there's some people out there saying, ah, just drop fools and make Sam your number two. And I'm, I'm like, oh, 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 well, let's calm down a little bit here. All right. Uh, but um, – Look, I like what Sam – I've been saying it all all preseason and training camp. I love what's the the improvement that we've seen from Sam, especially, you know, during the games, right? That 45-yard run for a touchdown was a thing of beauty, all right? And, and I'll admit it. He made those two defenders at the 20-yard line look foolish, okay, uh, when he made that cut. They should have tackled him. When the defensive tackle who was running the whole way – sprinting is the one that makes the tackle at the end zone that that makes the secondary look not so good okay uh <laughs> after 45 yard run uh now th- there's reasoning for why he was so open obviously this th- they were probably playing i didn't get to look at the 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 uh coaches film on it but i'm assuming they were all playing man coverage and their backs were turned to him right mm-hmm. didn't know that he was taken off probably until they heard the crowd the way screaming right and that that and then they turn around and by that point it's probably too late um but what are your thoughts on sam and 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 not just this game but the the whole entire preseason in general what do you think he's played himself into I think he just played himself into just having a spot on a 53. I mean, the whole goal was just to see him develop and and show tremendous progress from from last year to this year. And I think, you know, everybody saw that. I mean, he had a wonderful preseason, uh, you know, uh, especially in the games, just just showing the things that he can do. But, you know, like like you said, and we talked about earlier, uh, I think everybody just has to calm down a little bit. Uh, Nick Foles has proven to be, a be one of the better backups in the league, and it's a lot of teams that probably would love to have him uh, as a backup because we know what he can do. He's played in big games. That he still has a big arm, even though Sam's success looks a little different than, than Nick, Sto- Nick Foles' style of play. You know, everybody just calm down. He has two great veterans ahead of him right now to where he can soak and learn a lot during the season. And you want him getting reps during the season. So I'm pretty sure Sam would be the one that's the scout team quarterback going against defense day in and day out every day. So coming into next year, that's when you'll have your true argument about does Sam deserve to be the backup and all those things. You just want to see him uh, progress as this season go on, not just preseason. You want him to continue to get better as the season go on. And how do you get better is you got to get reps. Sam as the backup number two quarterback, you're not going to get many reps during practice because obviously the ones has to get ready. You'll get a few reps, but the ones are getting the majority. But the, the number one scout team quarterback, you're getting every rep for the defense. You know, you're getting 70 plus reps of practice at quarterback getting ready for the defense. So you expect Sam to progress as the season go on and then coming into the season next year, I think he'll he'll either have made a case that he deserves that spot from what the coaches have seen all year, or he'll go into the um, with a strong argument and ready to compete for that spot. But right now, if he was our number two quarterback, I mean, we like we said, we know if anything happened to Matt Ryan, you want your backup to come in and you still have a shot. If Sam was our backup going into this season, like the, the verdict is not out. Like we still don't know what we're going to get in a live setting, real um real 
game planning, top high level defense. We don't know how he'll react to that just yet. But what we will know about Sam is how he will react to it by week 17 when he's going against the number one defense for the Colts, you know, every week. Yeah, that is great insight, by the way. A lot of people don't think about that. If you're looking to develop the guy, making him your QB3 scout team guy is so important. You don't use your 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 quarterback as your scout team or your your backup as your scout team, even if he is a different uh style, you know, that the guy that you want to go out there and pretend is the the scrambling guy that, you know, pretending to be Mahomes or something like right. that, right? Uh, no, you don't because you want him to be ready, you know, if something happens to the starter, you know. So he <laughs> has to sit there and get visual reps and put himself in that position. And like I said, I'm not saying that the starters get every single rep, every practice, but for every drill, the the number two guys, backup guys, you know, if the if the period period is 12 plays, you know, the backup guys maybe be getting four, you know, and then you just got to be on point with everything else because the ones has to get ready. So um, for, for Nick Foles, you know, he's done that before. He's been in that role before. He knows how to sit back and, and, and uh, watch Matt Ryan go through a rep and he get the same work that Matt Ryan's getting, even though he's not the one that, you know, taking the live snap or whatnot. He knows how to be a professional. Sam is still learning. I mean, the guy is still, he just got in the league. You know, it's been a process with him and he's still learning, you know, the ropes, you know, how to conduct, how to learn, how to, you know, do this and that. So um, the best way for him to develop is to get reps at practice. And like I said, as a scout team quarterback, he'll get every single rep, you know, to develop. I think you asked uh, if anything else happened in the game that I want to talk about. Yeah. Not necessarily, uh, like I said, that first half, even though we didn't look as sharp as we wanted to offensively, you saw the spurts and just the excitement of, you know, that being some some lot like seeing Tampa's live uh, first team defense and then seeing some of our first team guys and then our first team defense. It was just kind of cool to see, you know, everything starting to get so close in the seasons here. I got excited that first half. Absolutely. Um, good luck to everybody that is currently on the roster. Hope you make it. If you don't, I hope you find a spot on another team somewhere. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of that situation going on. Uh, for the Indianapolis Colts because I think they are very, very deep at a lot of different positions on this team. Um, moving on, I want to talk about the NFL Top 100. Uh, I don't know if you you, you noticed, but um, so there is Shaquille Leonard. Uh, I don't know exactly where he placed. Whoa. I think it was like 18. 18, <laughs> something like that. Pretty yeah. high. There, even Fred Warner, you know, in that video about uh, Shaquille Leonard was singing praises about the fact that he gets the turnovers that he gets. Yeah. Uh, and be able to go out that you can't do that. That's, that's, yeah. that's just something that is not normal. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think, you know, just like when we talk about, you know, the plays that Darius make, it's just I mean, his instincts is just God given. You know, some of the 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 stuff that he does is God given. It's not something that he was taught. You know, it's just something that he just has in him. And then when you hear other players kind of speaking about that or speaking on that, you know, just respecting what he brings to the game, uh, I think it's cool to see. That's what that's what makes our league so great. Every player has its own unique way of, that that makes them who they are when it mm -hmm. comes to the superstars of the game. Uh, and, and that's why we pay money to see these guys. You know, if Pat Mahomes is on the field, you're expecting just to see some God-given talent with his arm, crazy throws. When Jonathan Taylor's on the field, you're expecting to see that God-given gift that he has when the ball is in his hand, making people miss just downhill. So. You know, it's just good to see, uh, you know, our guys getting some respect around the league, especially when we're talking about, you know, in the 18th position, 17th position, whatever number uh, Shaquille, <laughs> that's my first time even saying that, whatever number Shaquille is, uh, you know, just getting some respect. We had a few guys on that list, so that was good to see. Absolutely. Obviously, uh, uh, Big Q was on the – Kenny, yeah, yeah. Kenny Moore. Kenny Moore, uh, DeForest Buckner. We had quite a few people, but we have yet to talk about the number five overall. Uh, and th that is an impressive situation. Shocking. I have not we, – we, 
in a way, to me, it's a little shocking that he didn't even get a one series in the preseason, you know, but I guess the way he practices is like full tilt anyhow, you know? Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then you had a couple um, live practices with other teams and all that, so I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they, they, they saw what they needed to see from JT. So JT sitting at number five, number and and not only getting praises from – other players in the NFL, but divisional opponents who see him, you know, twice a year, sometimes three times a year. If, if, you know, we meet in the playoffs. Wow. Number five, the number one running back over Derek Henry, by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which is a, a big deal because Henry's been the number one running back for a while now. Uh, Jonathan Taylor at number five. Do you think he deserved number five? Do you think he should have been a little higher? Do you think he should have been a little lower? What was your thoughts on the placement and just in general of, of this? Uh, five, I, I want to say it's the right, right place. If, if, if I had to move him back some, I might have moved him back some, but kept him in the top 10. I mean, but whenever you're the, the top rusher in the league, everybody know how hard it is to be a, a running back in this league. So when you do, when you have those type of seasons, especially when, even though I know he'd done it uh, last year, the year before that, you can kind of see who he was, who he was going to be or like, or the potential uh, when he had a smaller role the year before. So um, I think people kind of knew it was coming, maybe not so fast that he was going to blossom this fast. And, uh, and I think everybody, like we've talked about before, is, is excited to see how he comes back this year to kind of prove another point that I'm not, I'm not more of a one-time type thing. Like, I'm going to be here to stay as a, one of the top running backs in the league. And um, uh, so if I had to move him back some, I would have moved him back just because of it was his first time being on that, that type of uh, spotlight and having that success or whatever. But I think, the, I think five's a good spot because, like I said, it's hard to do what – he did and what Derrick Henry's been doing the past couple of years. I mean, that is, it's hard to kind of keep that success up at running back. Yeah, it's kind of shocking because if I remember correctly, the year before he wasn't even ranked in the top 100. So he went nah. from being unranked to number five. That was that's a pretty big jump in that's the NFL, jump. ladies yeah, and gentlemen. <laughs> um, So we got two weeks. We have two weeks right now before the first NFL game for the Indianapolis Colts, actual season game, I should say. Uh, we know that practices, do, do they use the full two weeks to prepare for this this upcoming game, week one against the Houston Texans, or, or are they doing something a little bit different this week? No, they're definitely going to use the, the two weeks. I mean, everybody in the league is going to use the two weeks. You might get an extra day off or two. Uh, but when you're out there practicing, you're definitely getting ready for week one. Uh, you still got enough time to where the ones versus ones might still happen uh, for a couple days just to stay sharp. Uh, and then when the week of the game start, you go into your regular season mode. But this week right here, you might, like I said, you might get an extra day off, but the practice is going to be like ones versus ones type thing, high energy moving around, staying crisp, staying sharp. It's the first few practices to where it's just the 53 guys on the roster so you want to get everybody acclimated with their roles their responsibilities get their playbooks in hand and uh everybody just getting on the same page and doing whatever it takes to get the get to the ultimate goal and that's a, a w on sunday so this week is a good week for everybody to kind of start the responsibility of their specific roles that they're going to have within the team what's the is there a change in kind of the mood and attitude from going from uh, preseason practice to the very first practice of, you know, with just the 53, uh, is there, is there like a, a different feeling like, like uh, something click or anything like that? No, I mean, practice is practice, but like I said, now it's, there's like, nobody's competing now. Now it's, it's your role. You know, the starters are the starters, the twos are the twos. Uh, is that is that thing so now it's no more uh, now everybody's trying to help one another everybody's trying to make sure everybody's comfortable you're trying to get that chemistry that camaraderie whether it's families now hanging out but you know just having that that family type vibe within the team so I wouldn't say anything clicks or anything changes it's just now it goes from 
you're fighting for reps, trying to be seen, trying to win a job to now, now I know exactly what my role is within the team and just doing my role the best way I can. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your insights. We will be doing another one this Thursday. Depending upon what happens, uh, you may or may not be part of it. I hope we're able to get it to where you are part of it. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But those of you listening, please keep an eye out for that. Um, also, there could be some news coming up. Uh, some changes with Believe in Colts. Uh, very soon uh, if it happens you're gonna be absolutely ecstatic uh, the, the the way Gerard and I are uh, if it doesn't then you know it doesn't but you're we're really yeah you're just stuck with us sorry <laughs> um, but if you're listening to this on on an audio podcast please subscribe download share it with your friends go check us out on YouTube on my channel um youtube slash c sat slash lawrence owen if you are watching this on my channel please smash that like button hit subscribe if you're not subscribed and tag that notification bell because you do not want to miss anytime we get up a new episode on youtube and uh with that being said uh any final closing words gerard nah two weeks two weeks this thing get popping it's kind of exciting, man. Kind of exciting. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this episode of Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. That was Gerard Powers. This was brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 